You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, welcome one and all to another episode of Slightly Warped, and this is the podcast where we talk about anything and everything. I'm Rick. That's my man, Big Show. Show, how you doing? What's happening? I'm good. How are you, sir? I, I'm doing good. We, we we shared a laugh a couple days ago. I understand that in this vast world of movies, you watched the latest Thor movie. Yes, I did. How, how are those thoughts on that movie? That movie, how can I put this? Sucked ass. It 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 was the worst Marvel movie that I've seen. Superhero wise, it is in the same category as the Green Lantern. Wow. I, I wouldn't put it that bad. I was gonna I was gonna debate with you, but then I pulled up the list of every MCU movie from Iron Man on. There's and no every every one that I looked at, I'm like, no, that's better than Thor. Got down to Captain Marvel. Yeah, that's better than Thor. Got down to Thor the Dark World. I'm like, damn, that's better than, oh, wow. Um, So, yeah, that debate, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. I don't think it was as bad as you think it was. but Oh, it is. <laughs> it, it, it had just some. Like, re- ju- just like in the Green Lantern, there are some funny parts. Because Ryan yeah. Reynolds is funny. Yeah, that's true. But overall, the movie stank. Yeah, over, so, overall, yeah. Same with Thor. Chris Hemsley is funny in his parts. And uh, Chris Pratt helps him in the very beginning when, you know, the Guardians are with him. But, and sorry if nobody's seen it, spoiler alert. If you, if you haven't ain't seen, seen it, it by don't now, don't waste your time. Uh, now, I will say uh, this. Um, and it really had no story plot to deal with the overall MCU universe. That is also true. I I just wish that the movie took itself a little more seriously. Yes. I mean, it didn't have to tie in with any of the other uh, Marvel movies. They've had some that don't do that, and it comes into play later. They always tie in, even if it's the, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the credit scene. Yeah, there's yeah. always a tie-in somewhere, and it's minute. But really, let's you know, let's dive deep into this just a little bit deeper. Okay, <laughs> what was the whole point of uh, Natalie Portman's character coming back in this movie? Uh, you want the MCU's point, or no? I want your what. After watching it, really, could that movie have been just about anything without her in it? Yeah. Her being her being Thor, female version, had absolutely nothing to do with making the movie better. It didn't, like, save her from her cancer. No. It actually made it speed up, so she died sooner. Yeah. So, <clears throat> really, what was the whole point of that? Like, I thought, just by the, car- by the previews, Okay, I see where Black Panther is moving to a female hero. You have Captain Marvel. Yeah, you have Miss Marvel. You know, you're going to have Ironheart, which is supposedly Tony Stark's daughter. So you have all these women superheroes. Not 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 her daughter, not his daughter, just uh, someone who really admired Tony Stark. And... Well, in the comedy book, it's her, it's his daughter. So I just assumed it was the movie as well. Is it the little black girl's his daughter? Uh, well, maybe it's not Ironheart that I'm thinking of, but I know his daughter did have his suit or one of his suits in the comic books. Um, but, you know, but I thought it was all going to, that's what they were tending, you know, towards was a female super team or something, you know, because, you know, they, they read, you know, Black Widow's sister is, is basically taking her part, you know, and then. Hawkeye, the girl that was in that one, you know, yeah. so they have all these building, but like, really, what was her, you know, she 
came, she went, she died. She's in Valhalla now. Big whoop. You know, it was, it was really to me, it was a waste of it was a wasted plot line in the movie. I really wish they had expanded on Gore's plot line. He's supposed to be the god butcher, but you never seen him face any gods. You see one dead god, and then all of a sudden he's in a fight with them. Well, I wanted the to first see him god in the movie. Well, yeah, that first one. Okay, when he first grabbed the sword. I get that. But if you look at the comic books, he goes through and he lays a bunch of them to waste. And you actually get to see him fight and battle them. And to me, that would have made the mis- that would have made the stakes a lot more serious. I agree. They and spent too they much time with a, comedy. And if they would have had a different character playing him, yes. I don't have a problem with that either. I mean, because when you think about it, who would you have play it? Somebody that's muscular. I can see that. You know, like who, whoever, you know, the God Butcher isn't going to be some skinny, bald headed dude that can't stand the sun. I'm just saying. I, I agree. I agree. The name scares you. When you saw him, you probably laughed. That's why Thor was like, I kick his butt. Well, a group of kids kicked his butt. Come on now. Yeah. I mean, if you look at him in the comic books, he's muscular and he doesn't look <laughs> anything like, um, he looked in the movie. In the movie, he looked like Voldemort from the Harry Potter movies. Exactly, yes. And so, I'm with you. They need to stop making, you know, I'm okay with the Guardians of the Galaxy being the comedic overtone for Marvel. Thor does not need to be that comedic. Even I mean, Ant-Man to some degree. Takes. Yes! Guys that are actually comedians. Yeah. You know, that can make, you know, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, Funny. That's his character. But you know what? It worked in Ragnarok, but you had the weight of the problems that they had to face too. Correct. But because he- had... Hella wasn't no punk. She was mm-hmm. hell bent on taking over the kingdom. But also you had the Hulk in that as well. Yeah. So that helped balance any bullcrap that you know you think. Because even I I do think the comedic overtones were okay in that movie, but really, I mean Okay, Jeff, the ones between Jeff Goldblum and Loki were pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the chick that plays Valkyrie, she cracks me up, you know. Um, but, yeah, movie trash. Yeah. It's a complete waste of time. Now, while you were dragging through the agony of watching uh, Thor Love and Thunder, I actually sat down for the first time and watched Top Gun Maverick. Have not watched that yet. Oh, you watched the wrong movie then this week. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sure I did. I've heard I've heard that it is really good. It is very and good. My daughter wants to watch it, but she wants to watch the first one too. She wants to watch it first. So we haven't had the opportunity to do so. And and, and this is why I shouldn't have messed with it earlier. Goes Frazier. Down Te- goes Frazier. Technical difficulties on the set. <laughs> what in the world happened there? Oh, that's what happened. I got my cup too close to it and bumped it. And and you know, I'm I'm ashamed to say it's a it's a Raiders cup. We'll get to that later. Cause you know, they hurt me. They hurt me a lot. They keep on hurting me. This thing they hurt doesn't a lot stay of people. up. Yeah. They hurt everybody um, except the Jaguars. Oh, 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 oh. Where's my cardiologist? Um, <laughs> hey, did you perform your civic duty today? I did. Now, I'm going to say this. And I think we've said it on the show before. Because on this show, we are not pro-Democrat or pro-Republican. We are pro-right over wrong. Um, Regardless of the party lines that we vote for, I want to make it very clear that when you're voting, you are voting for the lesser of two evils. Let's let's just be honest about it. To a certain um, extent, yes. Yeah. Um, it's all about who lies the best to get the job. To a certain extent, yes. yeah. Depending on said job. <clears throat> well, well, I'm talking about in politics. Well, yeah, me too. Yeah, and... Um, 
how do I, I, I don't want to offend anybody or piss anybody off, but, uh, don't offend them. Who cares? Whatever you're voting for, whatever you're hoping to happen, don't look for it to happen. Really don't. <clears throat> and look for a lot more stuff to not go your way over the next two years. It's just not. The system is set up so that it doesn't matter about midterms. It it, it only comes into play during the presidential years. When the whole House and the whole Senate get switched over. Are you talking federally or statewide? Federally. And countywide. Fe federally. Okay. This is this is a midterm. I didn't really so consider state, this. County. I didn't really consider this a even though there were I didn't really consider this a federal vote. No, I it mean, is more it is more things. on the state level. Yeah. But state because you county. got because you got new people that potentially can come in, they're not going to work with some of the people that are already in if they don't see eye to eye with them. You know, just because we might vote for change, don't expect change to happen instantaneously. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's no. going to take work. It's going to take oh, work. Yeah. And in, any, in any election, that's how it is. And again, I'm not taking one side or the other, but I am so tired of seeing stickers on gas tanks that say, this is Biden's fault. Or there's somebody um, in the city where I live, their front yard, they have a flag that says, don't blame me. I voted for Trump. Um, so are you? do you not agree that the fuel crisis isn't Biden's fault? Oh, there's some weight on him for for sure. But what we have to understand, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, things that are happening today in society started two to four years before it got to the point where it's at. Deals are to made. To a certain extent. To, yes. Yeah, to a certain extent. Deals are made with other foreign countries about this, that, and the other. and Or deals are were made and then changed. Yeah. When the president was changed. Yeah. And. Or canceled or whatever. And let's say a company doesn't like the new president. They may make some changes. Prices go up. That's not. There it goes. Yeah. It's going what is again. going on? It, you know what? If I have to break this thing, I will. It's it's <laughs> not wanting me. It's not wanting me to make the point that I need to make. Uh, and all this is because we were talking about Thor's hammer earlier. <laughs> Neil <Mjolnir. laughs> That's another thing that took me off about that movie. The way he was talking to that damn axe because like he was a pet? jealous. Yeah. Oh my god! Like he was jealous of the hammer. Oh, that was irritating me. Anyway, I digress. But but you know, it could. That's what I mean when I say it could indirectly be the responsibility of whoever the party is that's in office just because other companies or uh, entities don't want to play nice. You know, they, they right. like, they like the kickbacks that they were getting with the previous <clears throat> regime. So it, it, in it takes political... all of us and it can be anybody else's fault too. Right. In any office, any yeah. election, any, you know, any house of representatives, any, elected officials in the White House, all that. If there is division in the community itself, there's going to be division in that political party or political house or whatever. So just because, you know, you and I disagree on things, they're yeah. going to disagree on things as well. They just have the power to, you know, swipe and, right and, or swipe And left. it's all about trickeration too, because there was one commercial, I think it was for governor. Um, the opposing person was like, this person... Uh, will not uh, do anything about boys trying to take over in girls sports. We're going to I've make sure that. that that doesn't happen. So I'm saying to myself, you only tell them part of the story. If you do your research, that person has no problem with girls playing boy sports. So you're sending a double message. Well, no, that because it's up to us as voters to actually do the homework. Right. You know, so if you don't do the homework, you can't say, well, I heard on the ad and this is why they lied to me. No, you should have paid yeah. attention and did your homework. But, you know, that's it's like that's, you know, vo verbal clickbait, you know, for me, you know. Oh, yeah. I hear crap like that. But. 
And one more thing, because this ticked me off, and I'm so glad today's election day. I got, I don't know if this happened to you, but the weeks and months leading up to today, I got so tired of the text and the phone calls. Oh my God. And you, I at, the, so at, at the end, it says press stop to text that to uh, opt out. I'm like, I never knew I was opted in. Yeah, I, I'm so thankful that after today, we're not going to get the texts and the phone calls and all the commercials. You know, I'm, I'm, hi, over. Ryan. I'm running for Congress. Can I depend on you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I can be bought. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just put that, you know, my conspiracy theorist part, you know, put that, uh, $2.9 billion winning ticket in my hand and we'll be good. There you go. Yeah, you give me that. I'll vote for you for anything you want. <laughs> I mean, you know, not for nothing, but... Oh, yeah, it's going it's to cost, but, you know... It, if I was, you know, if I was a conspiracy theorist, I would wonder why two of the top ten highest Powerballs landed in California in the year 2022. A state that doesn't impose state tax on winnings, <laughs> and twenty five percent of them are in the poverty range that live in that state. If I was, if I was a conspiracy theorist, if I was a conspiracy conspiracy theorist, I would wonder how a team in the National Football League has not one, not two, but three seventeen plus point leads in a game and loses every single time. But I digress. Oh, that, that's, that's not tough. a conspiracy theorist. That's, you know, there's a simple explanation. And, and I'll words. get into that. I'll get into that. In two a words. Josh McDaniels. You want those two words now? Fire the coach. That's three words. Josh McDaniels. No, those are the two words. What I tell you at the beginning of the year. You, you were right. I wanted to believe. This man's from New England. He's going to coach the New England way. It is clear that Belichick is the mastermind there. It is very no, clear. He wasn't. Tom Brady was the mastermind there. That's true. Bill Belichick ain't dead squat. That's true. Look at his team. You can tell Tom Brady was a mastermind. Think about this. He unretired so he wouldn't get that $325 million check. Now we know. And now... She gets half of everything except for the check that hasn't been cut yet. That now man walks away with $325 million or 375 whatever it is, in about six months, free and clear. Free and clear. And she can't get a dime of it. Yep. She's going to take half of his Super Bowl rings, too. That still leaves him with plenty. <laughs> More than gonna, she's gonna take more Super Bowl rings than Eli Manning did from him. Oh, 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 that right in the gut. It's a good <laughs> thing I'm not a Brady fan, I'm not either, but I respect him. Yeah, I'll say that I respect him. I mean, you gotta respect him. The man went to Tampa the first year, got a Super Bowl ring, so it's like case closed. I'm, okay, I will respect him for that because he whooped our tail in the Super Bowl. It's something that the Chiefs and the Raiders have in common. The last time they were in the Super Bowl, they got their ass whooped by Tampa Bay. Yeah. However, that was a COVID year. So he didn't have the pressure like he did last year when people were in the stands rooting against him. Yeah. It's pretty – like, if you actually talk to the football players in that year, it was actually easier on offenses because they could adjust. Everybody could hear them, you know – I must say that's why the Chiefs went back to back. I mean, because they weren't no great team to go back to the Super Bowl, but they didn't really have a, a stadium rooting against them. Speaking of the Chiefs, can we just ask every defense in the league to stop flexing as soon as you get a big play against the Chiefs? Because you know oh, all that's gonna right. happen is you're gonna you're gonna get your ass beat at the end of the game. As well, soon as Tennessee to... decided to pose for pictures in the end zone. I'm like, yeah, this going to overtime and y'all going to lose. What happened? They went to overtime. They lost. We might have to re-record some more, you know, if our time runs out. Because I don't want to – I want to give this NFL part of our, our show the most that we can. I don't want it to have to be cut short. Oh, uh, the Netflix part is going to be short. So we Let's might as well roll – 
we might as well roll with that. If you go with the lower tier, Netflix is ripping you off, and I'm going to tell you how. Broadcasts are not in 4K. They are not in 1080. They are in 720. So if you got a high-end TV, that shit going to look blurry. And you're going to get all those commercials, which we already knew we were getting the commercials, but you will get less programming. From what I understand, there's several shows that they are not contractually able to play on the commercial tier. Huh. So remember we were talking about I need to make that decision with Disney Plus? <laughs> decision been made, brother. I'm going to pay the extra couple bucks and make sure that I get no commercials and I keep all the programming that comes. Because if they pull that, and I can't watch my Marvel or my Star Wars stuff because it's not available with the commercial package. Man. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The Raiders are already if giving me problems only, and fits. Man, if that was only an option so I didn't have to watch that last Thor movie. <laughs> mm. Oh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> now, you did also, going back to that, you did also tell me to watch The Hulk. Uh, She-Hulk. Yeah, she Hulk I'm Attorney okay. at Law. I, I've got three episodes left. Okay, it's so it's safe. Good. It's safe to say next week we'll be able to get your report on that. Correct. Okay, I, I have it done. I have you my report next week. Um, it, it it's yeah. We'll talk yeah, about we'll, it. Yeah, we'll week. okay. Um, finishing out this Netflix thing. Your boy is thinking about picking up one or two more streaming services. I might go Paramount. I might go HBO. Uh, or I might go Netflix. I, I don't know which one or two, but whatever they are after reading this article, I am definitely going with the non-commercial tier. Um, I'd say probably out of all those that you've mentioned, Netflix and HBO Max, those are the two that I watch the most of. Yeah, I know Hulu. HBO Max has got the most stuff. I mean, yeah, but it's the stuff that's on those two cable networks. Yeah. I mean, like, you're not going to get... Well, you're not going to get I House mean, of Dragon that, without HBO Max. True. Uh, but, like, what was the... Oh, um, You get all the DC stuff through HBO Max. Yeah. Which is good, too, so... But see, I'm thinking about Paramount too. They, I've thrown them in the ring because you know I might want to watch the Star Trek shows. You can probably catch those on Hulu too, though. Only right? the older ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, Hulu you, is great if you want older content. They'll pick up the contract, and you know, and that's good. Uh, for example, if if I click on Picard. And this is just an example on Hulu. It sends you directly to Paramount Plus, where if you don't have an account, you just got you. ass out. Well, so I'll that's how they what. get you. I'll tell you what. Before you do it, get with me. I'll give you my sign on. You can watch. Save your money. Bet. And until they until they kill us on that. Well, yeah, you, you already know you can't do that with Netflix. No be more. sure to no be sure to delete that part out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, kids, back to the moment you've all been waiting for. You're about to watch a grown man cry. Okay, not maybe me. not so much. I did I did all that over the weekend, and I'm just gonna say this, brother. The season's over. And I know we're mathematically still alive. The Dolphins went 0-8 and made the playoffs a couple years ago. I get it. I really do. But when I look at this team, there's nothing that I see that makes me remotely think we've got a chance. Because in every game that we've had a chance, we blew it. So what's to make me think for eight, nine games straight, they're going to turn the ship around? And I know what everybody else is thinking. Hey, last year they did it. They ripped off six in a row. Different team. Different team. They had attitude then. They were different ready. Different team, different coach. And it all goes back to coaching. 
I really think that McDaniels is tanking for a higher draft pick. Nah. Unless he's got some... That's the fan in you talking. Because you're trying to come up with some solution as to why they suck. Well, you don't, you don't have this much talent. And... See, I think that's the problem. Really? They have too much talent. They have too many egos that are me-oriented on that team. Hmm. They don't have team players. Most of those guys are the same guys from last year, though. Exactly. The defense restauranter. Well, last year, they, they balled out. Come on, balled out? I mean, when it counted. Balled out, they just won some games against bad teams. It's not like they were no, they, beating no. the world. They they beat some pretty good teams down the stretch. Name them. People were like, name them. The Who? Colts were the Colts were a much better team than they are this year. The they Colts were the ones even sniffing the playoffs last year. Actually, actually, we knocked them out. They weren't even sniffing the playoffs last year. Yeah, we we knocked they, them out to get in. Carson Wentz was their quarterback. Uh, last year? No, it was. Yes. I thought it was Jacoby Brissett last year. No, Jacoby Brissett was 2019. Well, we beat the hell out of them then too. Um, it went, it went, to, it went. Jacoby Brissett 2019, 2020 was Philip Rivers, 2021. That's was what it was. Wentz, That's what it was. Okay. And this year is was Matt Ryan. I forgot about Phyllis. The Colts weren't even sniffing the playoffs. Who's next? Hell, that was last year. I don't remember all them teams. But you just try, you just try to throw some that they balled out. They didn't ball out. Hey, remember it's the national. Football if it League. wasn't for San Diego being stupid or LA being stupid, you may not have made the playoffs at all. No, no. If they had tied, we we'd have both been in. Pittsburgh would have been out. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So right. you know, y'all didn't ball out. You did just enough to get your butt kicked in the first round. By by you know Cincinnati, I'll take that. You know. Cause will you, will you? If Cincinnati's good enough to beat the Chiefs, what what chance did we have, really? The same chance that we had of beating them. Exactly. I mean, Cincinnati did. I mean, yes, they won on the scoreboard, but we beat ourselves in that game. So did we. They, remember, we were driving at the yeah. end of that game to actually take I'm the not, lead. I'm not and, debating that at all. I'm not debating any of that. But you are you as a fan are happy with last year's result? Um, yes and no. I'm happy that we actually made it to the playoffs, and I was hoping that we could use it as a springboard for this year to go deep into the playoffs. And that's what makes me upset. We're not even going to be as good as we were last year. And we're supposed to be getting better. We're taking steps back. Not a step back. We're taking steps back. Um, I'm seeing too many lapses in the offense. And right. the defense has never been worse than it is now. And I'm going to give you an interesting stat because I don't want anybody putting any comments in this show. Talking about, well, car's got to go. Car, car is serviceable. I'll give you that. He's not a world-beating quarterback. He's not. But he's serviceable. But if you look at the numbers, and I saw this today, Carr's been with us for nine years. He's won like 57 games, but lost like 70 some odd games. That's not a good record. But ever since we had Rich Gannon and went to the Super Bowl, in the time that we've lost Gannon, if you add all the other quarterbacks together before we got Carr, they only won 53 games. And that's been 11 years. So in less time, Carr has won more games. And he doesn't have a defense. He's never had a defense. If we give that man a top 20, I'm not talking about a top 10 or a number one defense. If we give that man a top 20 defense, that could be the difference between winning one game or more. And I can say that truly because with the exception of the New Orleans game, where we just got blasted, we've only lost by one score or less in every single game. If we had a defense that had half a sack, and I'm talking nut sack kids, 
um, we would have won some more of those games. I'm I'm looking up your guys' record from last year because that, that that whole comment about you balled out irritated me. So do we <laughs> so it would be the last said, six games, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I go that the sixth game was the Chiefs annihilating y'all forty eight to nine. Yeah. Okay, and then y'all won. It looks like you won five straight, maybe. Okay, so it was five straight. Okay, one, two, th four straight. Four straight. You beat the Browns. You beat the Broncos. You beat the Colts, and you beat the Chargers. Browns, you won by two points, sixteen to fourteen. Yeah. The Broncos, you won by four points, 17 to 13. You beat the Colts, 23 to 20. And you beat the Chargers, 35 to 32. Damn, we balled out. No, That's not balling out. <laughs> the Chiefs, when they played y'all, balled out 48 to 9. I, I agree. Okay. So when I say you were happy, but okay, from not making the playoffs for how many years I can see as a fan where you would be okay. I'm all right with that. We, we, we did what we had to do. We, we yeah. snuck in by the skin of our teeth. True. Now you got to realize in my mind at that time, I'm thinking, all right, we're building something. We are really building something because we're going to just get better. That's what you think. Or at least that's what you hope year to year. You get better. You progress. And yes. that's where the joy ended and the hurt began. I've you, seen nothing since the preseason to make me believe that this team is getting better in any way, shape, or form. It is yeah, a damn head scratch. Right. That's where you grow if you have good leadership. And that's why I blame it on coaching. But and the only moment coaching. the Raiders – well, you can't only blame it on coaching. These are paid professionals as yeah. well. They have to prepare themselves for said games. But if coaching they doesn't have draft, to execute said plays. If coaching doesn't draft JV squad players for defense, you know, y'all don't have JV squad for defense. Come on now. Okay, you take away Max Crosby. Name me another okay. good defensive player on the team. Just good. Abram. Abram was released today. 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 He hasn't played very much. They put some other person the in front safety? of safety? That is the reason why I blame coaching. That's the a head scratch. was released? Jonathan Abram was released today. Now, well, do you see why Chiefs I'm pick him do up. you see why I'm blaming coaching here? I hope the Chiefs pick him up. He's got he's got Marcus Peters attitude and athletic ability. Yes, I've always dude, liked him. That dude will lay a stick on somebody. Wow. I was just looking that up just to see. I was like, man, that's that's no way. He so I, I, I'll give you another chance. Other than Max Crosby, feel free to name anybody that's good well, on, on that defense. I gotta look at because I'm not a I'm not a fan, so I have to look at their roster. Hold on. Oh, I'll, I'll wait. I I'll give you all the time you need. Uh, did a team right there. I'm assuming they don't have because the, the other one, the, the I don't want to be politically incorrect, but the other defensive lineman they had that was really good. Um, uh, who are you talking about? I can't think of his name. Let's see here. Oh, nope, he's a running back. <laughs> Separate this by defense and offense. I don't want everybody. I'll just run down the list. Max Crosby. Have I mentioned Max Crosby? No, I, I went ahead and mentioned him for you. I got that out the way for you. Oh. You might yeah. be right. Yeah. <laughs> Chandler Jones. Old. Doesn't matter. He's good. He's been pretty much a ghost. You said season. good. You said yeah, I did say good. good player. I, I did say good, didn't I? 
You said another good player. That's the only name. Oh, Denzel Perryman's not bad. If he's not injured. That's True. the problem with him. You didn't say they were healthy. You said good <laughs> player. Yeah. Don't um, don't ch don't switch the goalpost now on me. <laughs> okay. Uh now I don't follow him, but I know he's good. The quarterback, uh with the weird name. I can't find him on here. Did you say cornerback? Corner, yeah, Yasin, Rock Yasin. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's good, but I think he's injured too. I mean, so you have some you have, but yes. I get you. But I'll tell you what, even with a bad defense, mm -hmm. if your offense is hitting, you have a shot. Yeah. So when you guys are up 17 points and your defense lets the other team in the game, the offense has to keep scoring. And this is where I'm going to blame coaching again because I, sit in, I sat here and witnessed it firsthand in this last game. You have – Second and two. So you got second down and third down, potentially a fourth down, too, if you want. Hand the ball off to Josh Jacobs. That boy should be able to get two yards. When I see them throw it three <coughs> straight times on second and two. What part of the game was that? This was a, towards the end of the game when they just okay. needed to get a first down. What was How was Josh Jacobs running in that game before that? just average for that game. They held him to like 67 yards rushing. That explains why they didn't hand the ball off to him. But off of 15 carries. By the end of the game, he should be at 20 carries, no matter what. You've got to establish a run. Any running back should, and I'll agree with you, any running back needs 15 to 25 carries to establish some sort of dominance and some sort of rhythm. I don't care who you are. Scrub to, exactly. to ace, ace on the field. I my team is is just as guilty as not handing the ball off. But if yeah. you're running the ball and not getting anywhere on how many, I don't care if it's eight to nine carries, you're going to be hesitant to give them that other five or six because you can't waste those downs, especially in a tight game. Just go to the Chiefs-Titans game, and then we'll come back to this one. My, we, we had 100 offensive plays, 100. Mm -hmm. 68 of those were passes. Yeah. And I realize because it's not always going to be balanced. True. And some of the running that we did, all of the Patrick Mahomes was the leading rusher. L let me just put it this way, though. You know, just so each had four yards. Everybody needs to understand this. Yeah. Although I'm a Raider fan, I respect the Chiefs. If you've got Patrick Mahomes as your signal caller, you damn right. I'm gonna pass more than I'm gonna run. <laughs> it's just that 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 man can do it all. That's an outsider position looking in because yeah, even though you're in the Kansas City area, greater area where you can follow them, you are not a fan. You're looking right. at it with with different set of eyes. I I mean, if you can see my wall, cheese. So I mean, I, I I bleed red and gold, right? So I understand what you're saying. However. That was part of the problem. Yeah. This game against Tennessee. The entire game was Patrick, do whatever you have to do to win the game. You're not going to win championships like that. You're not. That's true. Look I at Josh Allen. Look at Josh Allen. Buffalo Bills rely too much on Josh Allen. That's Josh why Allen they don't have him this week. Phenomenal, phenomenal target or, or a phenomenal arm talent. That's why they don't have him this week because they, re well, they he's relied not, he's on him. He's not much. completely out yet. He's not completely out yet. Mm. However, he gets injured. You're screwed. Yeah. Full you disclosure, know? he's my quarterback in my fantasy league. <laughs> I mean, I hope he's out because whoever I'm playing has him and I have Patrick Mahomes. So it'd be great. To... I ironically, my backup is Derek Carr. But let's go back to that because you had said we're going back to the Raiders because you said that you blame coaching, which is yes. fine. And I agree because I told you from the beginning, Josh McDaniels is not the coach. Derek Carr is not the quarterback. As long I can't as I can't argue that with you. Um 
I don't care. I would I would be more it. apt to argue that with you eight <laughs> weeks ago. Now I I'm able to sit back and actually like look at these games. And, you know, because like I said, Josh Allen's my fantasy quarterback. I'm watching a lot of Bills games. We've been watching, you know, Carr compared to um Lamar, Lamar Jackson. No comparison. Watching those games. It's like, man, I, I feel like that kid that's watching all of my friends play with their new toys, and I'm sitting on the curb without a toy, like, I wish I had one of those, you know? You know who would look good in a Raider uniform under the right coach as your quarterback? I'm I'm too old to play football right now. I'm 52 no, no, with no, bad no. knees. No, 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 no. I said look good and play quarterback. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. You neither one of those do you check off of, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and you're gonna, you might laugh at me, but with the right offensive talent, or with, I mean, with the right offensive minded coach, mm -hmm. like let's say Doug Peterson was the yeah. coach of the Raiders, Justin Fields would win y'all a championship. Oh, that boy's bad. He's cold. He he's almost on a led bad the come, team. He almost led the comeback against Miami Sunday. Yeah, he's on a bad team, but man, does he have some intangibles that Carr doesn't have? Now I'm gonna go back because I was trying to go this when I said Carr is not your quarterback. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about coaching, third yeah. and two, right? Yes. Late in the game, hand the ball off to Josh Jacobs, right? Yeah. Name me five quarterbacks better than Carr right now. Go. Oh, better than Carr? I can yes. name you more than five. Just we give already, me five. We already mentioned Josh Allen. We already mentioned Lamar Jackson. Um, I'll still give you Tom Brady. It, I hate to say it, but Tom's still in that. Um, this Jets quarterback, that kid is balling. Zach, whatever his last name is. Wilson. Uh, and then the Eagles quarterback. You can't discount him. They haven't even lost a game yet. Man, and we haven't even got mention, to Mahomes yet. I'm about to say, out of those five, we never mentioned Mahomes. But anyway, I'm just going to use those five. And I'm going to take Wilson off because I don't think he 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 does. he Any one of those other four that you mentioned, if it was third and two and they didn't feel like they should pass the ball, they would check to a run. Yeah. Carr will not do that. That's my point when I say he's not I your think, quarterback. I think under Gruden, he would have. He's not with Gruden anymore. Yeah, I know. But regardless, he's the quarterback. Is you, you think Josh might get mad at him for checking out of it? But if they win the game, he's not going to be mad. I, I agree with you there. And, and uh, let me give you one more because I know Carr you took. Is I know you took Zach Wilson out of his it. next team. There you go. There you go. Um, I, I I hate to say it, but somebody mentioned it online earlier. They would really love to see him move on to another team and really do good just so that he can get away from the insanity that has happened to him these last nine years. I mean, yes, no, but he, he is what he is. He's Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield has the same issues that Derek Carr does. You surround them yeah. with talent, they still don't succeed. They're going to give you flashes. They're going to do good. They, they have good spin on the ball. They're accurate at times. Both of them make boneheaded mistakes. Both of them are. I'll head give case. you that. I'll give you that. I, I wouldn't say Carr is a head case though. Um, a head case as far as doing something in a game that you're like, oh god, that could cost us the game. I get that, but Baker Mayfield is just a loudmouth little prick. You don't get that from Carr. Carr's more of a leader. Baker Mayfield is more of a show off. I, I will give you. I, I will. I, okay. I, I would. I, I'm really hard pressed to call Carr a leader. He's in charge. He is leading, but is he a leader? Eh. Now, now remember but, this other difference between the two of them. Carr's been in this league for nine years, and has had six different head coaches. Each one with a different offensive coordinator. The man has had no stability whatsoever. And that's what I mean by getting away from this madness. And Baker Mayfield has been in the league for four or five years and had four or five different coaches every year. Eh. 
I could give you that. I'll give you that. You're right, because he has been through a lot. Because he came in the league with – um, God, who was the guy that was coaching the Browns then? I forget his name, but he didn't last long. Oh, Hugh Jackson. That's who it yes. was. Yeah. Because then Hugh Jackson went to Cincinnati and coached defense or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so – but I would I would compare Carr less to Baker Mayfield. more. He's more along the lines of me as, as, a, as a Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is a winner. Until you get to primetime playoffs. <laughs> I mean, just look at his record. He's six and one or seven and one or whatever they are. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. a winner. Carr's not a winner. I, I, I can't discount that. Um, a lot of people will say Carr in 2016, 17, whatever it was, that was his best year, the MVP year. Ever since he broke that leg, he has not been the same. He Hold plays up. scared. What MVP year? He he was he was in the running for MVP the year they went to the playoffs. Who? Carr. Last year? No, not last year. When, this when was did they make a couple four years before under Jack Del Rio? Del Rio was the coach then. They went twelve and four. They went to the playoffs, but they lost because they didn't have Carr. Because the week before he snapped that leg, or it was two weeks before he snapped his leg, uh, uh, I don't know if it was the – I don't know which team it was that he was playing. It was either – Was that was that before Andy Reid in Kansas City? Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's why I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. They, those, are, those, were the, those were the lean years for the Chiefs. I don't know if it was before because Andy Reid's been with the team how long now? Uh, 2013 was his first year. Then Andy Reid was Andy Reid was coaching because it was 2016 when Del there's Rio. There's no way that there's no way that three teams made the play. And y'all didn't win. Y'all didn't win the division in 2016. I don't know if we did or not either. We were 12 and four though. So if so, we were one game out. The winner was probably 13 and three. But you're saying that three teams made the playoffs? Kansas in City. Denver and the Raiders? Did Denver go to the playoffs? They had Peyton Manning. Did they I make have... the playoffs every year he was there? I believe so. I mean, I I know that Carr was mentioned as one of the possible candidates for MVP. I think it actually went to Aaron Rodgers that year. I have to look that. Keep talking. I'm going to look that up. Who won the MVP in 2016? Because that's that, that, 2017 was the year we drafted Patrick Mahomes. That was Alex Smith's last year as our quarterback. So, and I thought that we, I mean, we won the division in the, for the last six seasons, right? Uh, Yeah, it's been some crazy-ass number like that. So, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. So, 16 was the first year that we would have won it. Huh. I do vaguely remember that year that he was ball that he was balling out, and I do remember the jokes after he broke his leg that the car broke down or something like that. Yeah. So I do recall that, but I I don't recall him being in the MVP conversation. But I digress. He he could have been. Matt Ryan actually won the MVP. So that was the year he Matt edged Ryan out then Tom Brady. To the Super Bowl. Yeah, he edged out Tom Brady and, then lost and to Aaron Rodgers. The Super Bowl. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so Peyton Manning's last year was 2015 then. Could have been, yeah. Yeah, so. So, no, that'd be right because then Denver wouldn't have been in the playoffs and would have been Oak, or the Raiders and the Chiefs. So, and I think 2016 was the year we beat Houston in the playoffs and then lost to the Patriots the following week. Oh, the, the, the offsides penalty? No, no, no. That was 2018. That was 2018? Okay. That was the championship game. 2016 was we went to Houston and beat them 30 to nothing. And then we went to – well, maybe. Maybe it wasn't. Because I, I want I, – shit, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm getting old. I don't remember. But – you know who who who's left on the on your guys' schedule? Um, 
Because we got to talk about this week's game, but we have to go into the other. We've got the Colts this week, then the Broncos, then the Seahawks, then the Dolphins. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's the Rams. The Rams, the Patriots, the Steelers, the 49ers, and the Chiefs. But your next two games are against the Colts. And the Broncos. And the Broncos. What's your record? Two and six. Two and six. Yep. Okay. So real quickly, the Chiefs are playing the Jaguars this week. Chiefs will win. Who you got? Chiefs. Okay. Who's the Broncos playing? Uh, Let me look that up here. Denver. Where are you at? Oh, my God. That's why I couldn't find it. Yahoo. It takes a second here because I'm looking it up by phone here. Denver has the Titans. Ooh, and I should have known that. Tennessee, Tennessee go whoop that be. ass. And it's in Tennessee, Tennessee by the be. way. And who the Chargers got? The Bolts have the 49ers in San Francisco. 49ers should win that game. Yeah, I agree. All right, so now we're back to the Raiders. Because I want to I want to talk about this too. The Indianapolis Colts fired their head coach yesterday, Frank Wright. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you know who their new coach is? They hired Jeff Saturday, mm-hmm. who just 10 days ago tweeted that the Raiders suck. Mm-hmm. Now, I think the Raiders are going to have a get-right game against the Colts. I'm picking the Raiders to win. I'm picking the Raiders to win next week, too. So you guys should be four and six with your destiny still in hand. For now. I'm just saying you should. But I want to talk about this whole Jeff Saturday hiring and your thoughts on that. Okay. What would you like to know? What are your thoughts? How do you feel about it? All right. Again, I'm Raider fan, but I respect the Chiefs. I really do, you know, because that's my division. I'm I'm down with the AFC West 24-7. Eric Bieniemy, who coaches in this league, gets passed over year after year after year, as well as other coaching candidates who coach in this league. Yet I see a lot of teams practically pick up people off the street to be their next head coach. And I'm wondering, what is these people's qualifications, especially with this Jeff Saturday? I get it. That was Peyton Manning's dude. That was the center for the Colts. Great. You're really great. I'm glad you consult for the Colts. But are you really ready to not just coach? I mean, it's one thing for Deion Sanders to go coach Jackson State. That's just one step above high school, for real. Real talk. (laughs) Jeff Saturday is about to get handed the keys to the kingdom in Indianapolis for the Colts. He is not ready. And I don't care if he rips off five straight wins. He's not ready because once he comes back to reality, he's going to run into some team that is going to bitch slap that team. And when reality sets in, you'll realize the word interim means just that. That title's about to come off. Now, I would tell you this. If he rips off five Five straight victories. <laughs> he is better coach than Josh McDaniels. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. If he if he beats him this week, he's a better coach than Josh McDaniels. But keep going because I I, I think we're on the same page, but I, I want to keep going. I, I, I just feel that there's a lot of candidates in the NFL for head coach positions that get glossed over. Um, who is that defensive coordinator, uh, Raheem Morris? He's in Tampa now, but should he have gotten a head coaching position sooner with someone else? Look at Miami's former coach who he's in a lawsuit with him right now because he was asked to tank so they could get a higher draft pick and he refused to do that. And he paid the price for it. That wasn't fair. You give True. somebody a head coaching position, you expect them to do well. Don't hire somebody as your scapegoat. 
So what do you think? What why do you think they hired Jeff Saturday? Like what what was the reasoning? If if you're Jim Ursay, what would your reasoning be? That's my guy, man. We go out to dinner every Sunday. We watch the games together. He's our consultant. Because he, he, he knows all this about football. I could give you okay. stats all day. I could tell you plenty of things about. I could tell you more about the Raiders organization than Josh McDaniels will ever know. That doesn't oh, yeah. make me more qualified than Josh McDaniels. And I'm, tell, I'm telling you he should be fired right now. That doesn't mean I should be the head coach. Because I'll match his record. So then we'll end up. What? Couldn't do any worse. Yeah. <laughs> we'll end up, what, 4 and 15 uh, or 4 four and 14, whatever comes up. Hey, to but, then, but then you you draft that Ohio State quarterback and y'all are right back in the, in the thick of things. <laughs> so this is where, cause I, I, this is kind of where my thoughts are. And you said Eric B. Enemy, and that's great if it was the offseason. You're not going to pluck another. A, coordinator from any team that's already playing right now. That's not going to happen. And so, I get that. So why not promote up somebody who's already? That's where I'm going. Coaching. Okay. Do you actually know who's on the coaching staff for the Colts? No, I do not. So what I've heard is that, you know, Jeff Saturday, one of Ursay's guys, he was part of the championship team, want to bring some of that swagger back in. And that's why he was asked to be on the team. You know who else is on the coaching staff that was on that team? Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne is the Colts wide receiver coach. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't he promoted within? Great same question. qualifications. Great same question. qualifications mm-hmm. as Jeff Saturday. However, better qualified because he's actually coaching in the NFL. Jeff Saturday was coaching high school. You know. Right or wrong, wrong complexion. He he stayed out in the sun too long, and that's why Ursay didn't promote him. But here's my head scratcher. Do you know who is their defensive assistant coach? I do not. John Fox. 30 years as a head coach. Yeah. Took the Denver Broncos to the Super Bowl and won. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure some mistakes have been made in Indianapolis this week. I don't I flat besides it being a complete and I'm not trying to move this to a racial issue, but to can be a complete slap in the face to the minority coaches that are qualified that are on his staff. There's another head coach that's on their staff that was a former head coach. I just can't remember his name. I was trying to look it up. But I but I, I I can't I don't I just know those two Reggie Wayne which qualifies just as much as, as Saturday, but then you have John Fox on your team who could John very well John Fox be would be my interim interim head coach exactly so here let's I'm John Fox I'm gonna listen to Saturday who hasn't coached one down in the NFL I don't get it. Yeah, and if y'all is, lose uh, to the Colts, if you lose to the Colts, oh my God, next week's going to be bad for you. If you lose to the Colts, if oh. we lose to the Colts, you might be hosting by yourself. <laughs> you might be, I, you might be, you might be talking about this game and reading my obituary at the same time. <laughs> Boy, uh, I hope, I hope that y'all mop the floor with them. I hope this is a route. I hope y'all get right. Is it in Indy or in, in... – It is in Vegas. Okay, yeah. I hope y'all wax them. I, I really do. I just – on principle alone. I'm right there with you. I will not feel as bad if we lose because from everything that I've witnessed these last eight weeks, nothing in my body tells me that this is going to be a get right game because every time I think it will be, which is the first half of every game, that second half (laughs) brings me back down to reality. I mean, what kind of teams score at will in the first half and do absolutely nothing 
in the second half and end up losing those games. That's where your statement of coaching comes into fruition. They do not adjust well. Exactly. And the other team adjusts. You know, I, that's where I'm always happy about my team, no matter the position. Like, I'm telling you, I was super frustrated Sunday night watching that game. It's like, good Gandhi, we can't do anything. We can't run. But in my mind, I know halftime will adjust. They won't be able to run like they ran. This rookie quarterback's not going to, you know, we're going to take care of those RPOs and those rollouts, which we did a great job. I mean, I'm a, hats off to my defense. They did very well in that second half. But I mean, the Titans came out with a great game plan. First down, the very first play, they threw it to the tight end. It's like, okay, you're off balance the rest of the half because, oh, he can throw. Yeah. He what didn't, really? He didn't, but you were. it was in the back of your but, mind. But the tight end was eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> the dude broke that, That's true. Out. That's but true. It's not like he, he threw it, you know. But, but it's, it's a head game. It, it, right. And y'all made the what, adjustment, though. What? What caused us to go, oh, crap, was the first play Henry ran for 55 yards. Yeah. Then they did the pass to the tight end who broke 157 tackles and ran 48 yards. Okay. But then the next drive, my man did the RPO and ran up the sideline for 40 yards, the quarterback. Yeah. So we're like, holy crap, we can't, we can't stop the run. We can't stop the little dunk pass. And now we have to worry about this. So we they were on our heels in the in the in the in the first half. But Mike Vrabel's a hell of a coach. Hell of a defensive coach. He's a hell of a coach. You talk about a, a coach that falls off of the tree of Belichick, Belichick. Yeah. And is just like him mindset wise, Vrabel. That's right now the he's new, the only person that's fell off of that tree that's had success. That's the New England coach that if you were a team, you want. Yeah. If he had a quarterback, just yeah. saying. If Tannehill was playing that game, we would have lost. Because Tannehill would have did just enough to keep our defense from loading the line of scrimmage. Uh, I, I can't disagree with you on that. That's why Denver's in trouble. Boy. <laughs> Boy. I mean, if if Malik Willis plays, I mean that game could be a baseball score, six to three. Yeah, yeah, because because Denver's defense isn't shoddy. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. going to be a defensive struggle, depending on who the quarterback is for Tennessee. Yeah, not that Ryan Tannehill is a big difference. Like I will say, just Ryan, enough. Just I'll enough. Say Ryan Tannehill and Derek Carr are on the same level. After your comparison with um, Kirk Cousins, I have to say no by the, by those same comparison because Tannehill's even won, you know, more games. But true, but Kirk Cousins, oh, fine. I was trying to give you some props. Fine. No, you're right. I, I, I agree. I appreciate Derek the Derek Carr's Baker Mayfield. You're right. Um, <laughs> Derek Carr's Malik Willis. Uh, no, even that's 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 discouraging, but I don't know. It's gonna be fun. I'm rooting for you guys this week, though. I really am. I I hope that y'all trash the Colts just on principle. I mean, believe me, I'm I'm hoping that we trash them too. But I I'm, think you I'm, should. I be, wouldn't be surprised if we don't. I think you should be very optimistic about this game. I, I'm trying to be. There is and, not an intang an intangible the Colts are going to be better at the Raiders this game. You have the better coach, you have the better quarterback, you have the better running back, you have the better wide receivers, you have the better line. Defense, maybe Colts have a little bit of 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 better position on the defense, but your defense versus the Colts offense shouldn't be worried. If y'all don't win by double digits, I'm going to be surprised. I'll be shocked. And see, that's that's the other thing. Um, I don't want the highs to really get too high. I know I joke about it, like when I said they balled out in 2016. Um, 
Well, they did ball out in 2016. I'm talking about last year. Um, <laughs> if we win 17 to 15, that's worse than a moral victory. Yeah, we won. Great. But if you if you can only put 17 points on the board against this team. I would then, say depending how you win. But, yes, you should put – man, y'all should, y'all should score at least – I want to say 27 at the very I was least. about to say at least 28, you know. Yeah. I'll take 24 to 3 as as a as a shellacking. You know what I mean? Well, they do have Jonathan Taylor in that backfield. So no, they it, don't. <clears throat> He's they, been they, injured the last few weeks. Ooh. I, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. Unless he unless he comes off the injury report. But he, yeah, he didn't play the last two games. Mm, okay. I mean, that's I, I, that's also I, a reason why, as a Chiefs fan, I'm scratching my head. How the hell did the Colts beat us? They had the right game plan, period. If you play them nine more times, you win all nine of those games. Straight up. I mean, we fumbled punts. We fumbled, you know, we, we well, did. Yeah, that too. Stuff. You had two missed field goals in that game. Yes. And if just I'm like correct, that was, if I'm correct, that was the uh, kicker that was uh, just there for a few weeks while uh, Butker was, uh, was injured. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Butker, Butker does the exact same thing this past week. You know, miss a field goal, makes an extra point. Yeah. I remember when extra points were given. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that? Well, you're talking about somebody who got complacent with that. We had a kicker by the name of Janikowski who could hit it from any distance. Parking lot, I'm good. Right. <laughs> so but that's field goal. I'm so talking about extra, I'm talking about simply extra point. Oh, well, you know, he, he, for, he rarely missed an extra point because he just pretended know, that but, the stands were the goalposts. Right. But what I'm saying is you see more kickers nowadays missing extra points. And they shank them bad, too. Not field goals, extra points. And I get it, it's the same kick. But field goals vary distance to distance. Extra points always on the same yard line every single time. It doesn't the change. Ones, the ones that you see that miss it the most, you they have two them. styles of kickers. You've got the kicker that hooks and they go right in, or they hook it too much and it curves off. The guys that kick it dead on, have better percentages. Look at the but guy in every, Baltimore. That every dude is kicker. Yeah, Tucker, he's phenomenal. Yeah. But every kicker should kick it straight on on an extra point. There's no need to do all this hooky crap. It just depends on how you came up and what style you learned with. Hey, an extra point. I just remember back in the day, it was a given. You score a mm -hmm. touchdown, all right, we're up seven, even though you still got the extra point. Very rarely did they miss kicks unless they were blocked or a fumble yes. snap or something like that. Days of the Nick Lowry not missing a field goal, you know, extra points. You know, Nick Lowry never missed a field goal from y'all until y'all uh, changed Arrowhead to grass. When it was on turf, that dude was automatic. He was still good <laughs> with the grass. Although he, he was did last. I, I want to I wanna say that was his last year was 93 with us because 94 is when we went to grass because that was Montana's second year. That's and right. I want to say we had he who must not be named. As a Chiefs fan, as the kicker, starts with an E. Last name starts with an E. I know it, but I won't say it. Chiefs okay, fans I, know who he is. I don't know it, so I'm, I'm not going to egg you on on that. I'll, I'll leave you. I'll give you that. <laughs> All right. We uh, are running out of time, but this was a good one. If you like NFL, <clears throat> even if you're a Raider fan, this was a good one. Um, appreciate you as always. You guys that are, you know, watching on YouTube, leave us a damn like. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to hear and see in the future. Uh, hopefully, things are going to get a lot bigger and better for this show. And, you know, for those those of you who are on board from the beginning, you will be pleasantly pleased. Yes, sir. Show, thank you very much. All right, man. Take care. Yeah, you too. Everybody, good night. If I'm not here next week, that's because the Raiders lost. Later. <laughs>